Welcome everyone this morning here in the name of the Lord here today as we have an opportunity during the Epiphany season. It's always to be this manifestation, this revealing of who this child is in Bethlehem and what he's come to do. And so today we're going to have something very interesting as our Lord is going to tell us, what have I come to do? How am I going to do it? And what does it mean for you? And we're going to look at how this message is very unique. And for us, it's a very hard message to swallow. Filled with a tremendous amount of doubts. Did any of this ever happen? Is any of this true? And what do we do with all of that? And the Lord is going to tell us today, repent. Empty ourselves. Fill ourselves up with Jesus. And believe this utterly incredible good news of what I have to do. And that will be the focus of our sermon then here this morning. So we begin our worship then with our opening hymn as we sing, Awake my soul and with the sun. Sorry, all 
merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Amen. Stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. Old Testament reading here this morning, taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter, fits in so well here with what we've been studying in the book of Revelation as we're now heading into the final third of that book in Revelation 13 and 14. So often as we talked about here this morning, we have the theology of look aroundism. My idea of what the spiritual realm is all about is what I see as I look around with my own eyes, and that's reality, and that's who's winning, and that's where power is, that's where pleasure, that's where meaning in life is. And if I, if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. If I can't see and understand it, well then, it's not out there. But the interesting thing is, Isaiah is going to remind us, as he quotes the words of God, God's going to say, don't you know, don't you hear, don't you see? You've been told from the very beginning, I'm sitting on the throne. I made everything. I own the deed. I own the title to everything. I sit above the circle of the earth, and you think you're so big and mighty and strong. Here's nothing but a bunch of grasshoppers. I've stretched out the heaven. I'm in control. And you know what? We so often think the people who are the power, the pull, the movers and the shakers, they're calling all the shots. And the Lord's going to say in the end, I bring them to nothing. And I make the rulers of the earth as emptiness. I'll actually blow on them one day, and they will all fall over. Because I am the Holy One. Who can compare to me? So we hear then these words of the Lord God Himself. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And his inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Who spreads them like a tent to dwell in. Who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emperors. <coughs> scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? That I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my, my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. 
For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win them. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run, that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Be to God. By the congregation, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter, and this reading will inform the basis of our sermon here this morning. And immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let's go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, God. We confess our faith then with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Maybe sooner than as we sing our hymn of the day, I know that my Redeemer lives.
Christ our Lord. Amen. If you took the three readings today, you took it on your bulletin, took it home, take a look in your Bible, you'll find that there's only one sentence from today's readings that are printed in red. This sentence, Jesus says, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there. For that is why I came out. I love to read the red words of the Bible. They are the words of Jesus himself. You know what I mean. They're mostly in the second half of the Bible. What does Jesus say? These are inspired records. There's so many morsels of wisdom that you can gather from the red print. But were they really Jesus' words? Let's consider, I mean, someone heard him say it, and then they wrote it down many years later. Or someone heard Jesus say the words, then they told someone else about it, and then they wrote it down many years later. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course. But then... Those written words were copied by hand, and copied by hand again, and again. So we wonder, what about the rest of the Bible? Did any of the Bible really happen that way? What about all the black letters? I mean, it's been 2,000 years or so. Double that, and even more, for the Old Testament. I mean, an entire Red Sea parted for passage? It makes a good story. It even makes a great movie. I guess it's up to you if you really want to believe that or not. A world flood? A man swallowed by a great fish in the sea? The voice of God like thunder on a mountain? And what about Elijah? Raising someone from the dead? Have you ever seen what dead looks like? I know we've all at least seen a dead animal on the side of the road. One that's been there for a few days. It ain't getting up. <laughs> but then in red letters... Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Jesus himself raised after three days. It is difficult to trust the complete truth of the Bible. The view gets clouded, clouded by these thousands of years. What if the story has changed? Well, the story has not changed. These words, I promise you, are accurate. Even historians that are not Christians, they agree with this. Something else must be getting in the way, preventing you from trusting Scripture. Well, the opposite of trust is doubt. <laughs> And this doubt is something you've done to yourself with some help. It's something that Satan and you have been working together on. Satan hands you the heavy baggage of doubt, and you, grab, and you gladly grab it and throw it into your heart and throw it into your mind. He'll even loan you some of his <laughs> demons so that, you, so that they can manage the baggage for you. You've filled yourself up with all this stuff, this doubt, that gets in the way of trusting the Word of God. Doubt is the sickness that blocks trust. You're filled with it. Your spirit inside of you is ailing. You all have old demons, don't you? You all have skeletons in the closet. 
Things that you are ashamed of? Things that you have taken a vow of silence to? <laughs> things that you wouldn't even talk to God about? You will never speak of these things again. But yet it fills you. And it makes you sick. You're full of sickness, full of sin, full of doubt, and full of demons that nag you. They poke at you. Before you know it, you've got too much to handle. You're put on defense, and you turn to self-help. This will make me happier. This will help me trust the Word of God. Full of demons, and now, full of yourself. Selfishness. You try to trust the Bible. You know that in there, there must be some sort of truth. Somewhere. So you try to fight through all the anger, all the shame, all the sin, and all the doubt that fills you. Forget it. If there's nothing else you get out of this sermon, you need to get this. Stop trying so hard. You're filled with this terrible gunk. You've got a rock hard, a rock hard heart in your chest. You've got to admit that you're filled with this gunk. False hope a false trust. We do this all the time. You have to empty yourself. And there's only one way to do this. Repent. Admit that you have no real hope. Admit that you are full of false hopes. And we have to admit that we are all going to die. Tell the Lord your God you're sorry and pray for him to rescue you. Repent and believe in the gospel. Give up all other hopes. Today's gospel reading takes place in the city of Capernaum. 1,500 people lived in Capernaum. All of them brought their sick and their demonized to Jesus. Because they too had no other hope. They knew that death was coming for them. 1,500 people gathered at the door waiting for Jesus. Help our sick. Get rid of our demons. The entire city had been emptied of all other hope. Be empty. Be empty. Cast all of your burdens on the Lord. 1,500 people. They stood around the doorway, standing helpless. We should feel the same. They understood why Jesus was there. And why Jesus was there in that town is the key. The next day, when he was able to get out early in the morning, while everyone was still seeking him, Jesus says, in today's only red printed letters, let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. The 1,500 gathered at the door. They'd given up all other hope, and they wanted to be filled. They believed in the preaching of Jesus Christ. They believed in the gospel of real hope. Even if they'd only just heard it from their next door neighbor. What was he preaching? What was this miraculous sermon that Jesus was preaching? The sermon was this in red printed letters.
just earlier in the same chapter. Repent and believe in the gospel. The 1500 were filled. They believed in Jesus, the one who speaks with authority. They were filled with the gospel. Sick people were cured. Demons were cast out. Sick souls were saved. Now for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for you, O oh empty ones, for you, O oh sweet repenters, saints of Calvary Lutheran, be filled. Be filled with the sweet gospel. With this filling comes the trust that you so deeply desire. My friends, your cup runneth over. Be filled with the gospel of the body. For it was Christ's body who was ravaged unto a sour death so that your body may have sweet eternal life. Be filled with the gospel of the blood. For Christ is the one who emptied himself of all blood and water for your forgiveness. The holiness that he empties on the cross was given and shed for you to be filled. Forgiveness is it's not just the emptying of your sin, but the ultimate refill of eternal life. Your cup runneth over. Be filled. Be filled with the resurrection. Christ resurrected, filled with pure, perfect divinity. This divinity he fills you with. Your cup runneth over. You are filled filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Word of God. You are filled with everything that's behind the Word of God. You have died with Christ, a real death. Not an empty promise in print. You will rise with Christ in a real resurrection like His. A real resurrection that the printed words tell you about. Filled. Filled with real holiness. More than just printed words on a page. Your cup runneth over. Holiness now pours out of you. Faith pours out of you. Your trust in the word of God is abundant. You are filled with so much joy that when you repent and believe in the gospel, you cannot help but smile. It's, it's great to smile in church, isn't it? Well, your smiles are a reflection of the light of Christ that is in you. Deep inside your soul, he has healed your sicknesses. He's cast out your demons, swipes it all away easily, and then he fills you with holiness immediately. Your cup runneth over, and it's written all over your face. Now on this earth, we need to keep watch. We need to keep our lanterns lit. We're still surrounded by Satan and his demons. So while here, until that last day of death comes, you'll need to continue the pattern of repenting and believing, of being empty and being filled. You'll hear on TV, you'll read in books, it's all over the place. You'll hear, you can do it. The words, you can do it, are never printed in red. <laughs> this cycle will not go on forever. You are being filled for a reason. The Holy Spirit that you are filled with, right here and right now, is powerful. Powerful enough to save your soul. Powerful enough to raise your body from the dead. Powerful enough to wash away your sins every single day. 
with every word of God you hear on a Sunday morning, with every word that you hear and read in your devotions, with every word you say in your prayers, with every words of the Lord's Prayer that's in red printed letters, every word fills you with the Holy Spirit. Your cup runneth over. You're being filled with every single word that Jesus Christ speaks. And this is not just the red printed letters of the Bible, but the entire word of God. My friends, let the entire word of God ring in your ears and echo in your hearts until death do you part. May all your lives be eternal and glorious ones with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue our service with the prayers of the church. Please stand. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we give thanks to you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could never overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, we give you thanks. And we pray that you would give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the good news of the gospel. On this Lutheran Hour Sunday, we give thanks for the work of the Lutheran Layman's League. And we pray that by your means, many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their true course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable wreath of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and all the rulers of this earth. Graciously preserve our land and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but lead us to repentance. Renew us, that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son is the great physician, the healer of both body and soul, at whose hand demons, disease, and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you then this day those who are in any need, especially Russell, Don, Gisela, Wilma, Bill, Conrad, Pastor Rasmus, Phil, Holly, Ken, Helen, Bev, Harold, Stephanie, Marlis, Haley, Jesse, Betty, Vanita, and Shirley. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also eternal life and salvation. Bring us in such faith this day to your table, to your holy sacrament, that the blood of Christ, which atoned for our sins, may make us whole. Strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil. Turn us in love toward our neighbor, and preserve us in both body and soul into life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, dear Father in heaven, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue then with the service of the sacrament, beginning there with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past he spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, who is the radiance of his glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testimony. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May be seated then as we sing the August day at the Lamb's High Feast and we'll begin the distribution. Take a knee, take a drink, the body of the Lord Christ, give them shit for you, forgiveness.
Take an eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, give and shed for you the forgiveness. Take and eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, give it and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, give it and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take and drink. Body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take a drink, body and blood of Christ, give it and shed for you. Forgive us all of your sins. Take a eat, take a drink, body and blood of Christ, give it and shed for you. Forgive us. Take and eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, give and shed for you. Give us for all of your sins. Take and eat, take a drink. Body and blood of Christ, give and shed for you. The forgiveness. Take and eat, take and drink. Body and blood of Christ, give and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take and drink. Body and blood of Christ, give and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take and drink. Body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat, take and drink. Body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We stand for prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy we strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. For Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. Welcome everyone this morning once again in the name of the Lord, especially on a very cold day as we come out here and we know this is the place where we need to be. This is the place where we can come and be filled up. We try to fill ourselves up so often with all the stuff out there in the world, it'll never satisfy, it'll never really truly fill us up, it'll always leave us empty. 
So we come here Sunday after Sunday. In fact, day to day we go to the Lord repenting, emptying ourselves, taking off our sin, and we fill ourselves up and put on that righteousness of Christ. And we give thanks to God that we can come here and do that and receive His great gifts of life and salvation here this day. A couple quick announcements here this morning. First of all, this is Lutheran Hour Ministry Sunday. There's a little insert here in your bulletin that kind of details the work of that. Uh, so many people have said it as I've talked to them on the phone or started up visits here over the last couple of weeks. So thankful for Worship Anew to watch church on TV and then to tune in on the radio to Lutheran Hour uh, Sunday after Sunday. And so if you'd like to help out uh, with that ministry, kind of details there in the bulletin how you can do that here this day and then other days. A couple other announcements here. This uh, upcoming week, Tuesday night, Board of Preschool Ed will meet at 5 o'clock. Uh, you'll get a Zoom link here and an email this week for that. And then the uh, Board of Trustees will meet here at church at 6.30. And then this Thursday night we'll resume here our uh, new member refresher class here in the sanctuary. We didn't have it last week due to weather, but we'll be here for 6 to 8 o'clock here this upcoming Thursday. Then finally here in the inside back cover of your bulletin is the uh, Lenten midweek schedule coming up. Lent starts not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is February 17th. And we're going to have a little bit of a different kind of uh, midweek Lenten service schedule here uh, this year. Right now, most of the people who are here for worship are older people. So we're going to try to accommodate with their schedules. And so they said, we'd like to, with cold weather, everything else, it being dark, uh, we'd like to have a service during the day. And so we're going to try to meet that need here for the first five Wednesdays leading up to Holy Week. And then also spring break, we'll have a noon Lenten prayer service, half an hour. So if you're at work too and want to just sneak over here for that half an hour during the lunch hour, you can do so. We'll have those Lenten prayer services and we'll look at the Passion Reading. And then one, every one of those Wednesdays, one of the last words of Jesus from the cross. And then we'll have a time of uh, going through some unbelievable prayers that have been a part of the prayers of the church for so long. With the early church fathers, from Martin Luther, St. Augustine, and then some of the English reformers. And I think that's one of the things uh, that we've truly lost here uh, over the last several years is true piety in prayer. And we'll be focusing in on that passion of Christ here during that time as well. So we'll have those. And then we'll have two evening services as well. So for those who can't be here for that Lenten prayer service, it'll also be recorded. You'll be able to click on it online and watch it. But we'll have two uh, Wednesday night services as well. We'll have Ash Wednesday service with imposition of ashes and then also celebration of the Lord's Supper at 7 o'clock. And then halfway through the Lenten uh, schedule here on Wednesday, March the 10th, we'll have another worship service at 7 o'clock. And then we'll go to our normal Holy Week schedule that'll be there. It's printed down there at the end of the page uh, at the end of March and then into early April. So if you've got any questions about those services, call the church. Uh, stop by, give me a call, talk to me, and uh, we'll help you out with that. But uh, I think some wonderful opportunities here to grow in our faith as we make that journey with our Lord here to the cross in the empty tomb this Lenten and Easter season. So have a good week here in the name of the Lord. We look forward to seeing you here next Sunday. We will also have the installation of our newly elected board members and officers of the church. So that also includes people who served a term and then they were re-elected. So as they start a new term, we'll also do the installation uh, of you as well here both, during both services. So just uh, come to one of them. We'll have the installation of those who attend that service uh, next Sunday after the sermon. So we hope to see you here next Sunday, and we'll conclude our worship service then this day with our closing hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.